Diablo 2 has one of the best item systems in action RPGs to this day. The big reason for that is that it strikes a balance between powerful rare gear that you have to find and the ability to combine other more mundane supplies into gear that is competitive with, or sometimes even better than, this rare gear. Today we're going to talk about the item slot most used for this. Armor. Specifically Rune Word Armor. While impossible to really rank because some are class specific and have other factors that really play into it, I'll try to keep it a general flow from bottom to top tier. Despite armor rune words bordering on broken at the high end, we still do have a handful that just in and of themselves are not terribly useful, especially compared to the cost. Probably the best example of this would be Gloom. While not entirely bad, it doesn't really provide much in the way of advantages for the cost. At Foul, Um, and Pull, it gives us a few minor stats, a dim vision when struck, and okay resists. And with the exception of the dim vision effect, we can get most of that for cheaper and sometimes even in greater values. For me, Gloom is essentially the armor equivalent of Nadir and is much more expensive to boot. Another similarly underpowered for the cost is the rune word Stone, costing Shale, Um, Pull, and Lum. It falls into a similar category as Gloom in that there are cheaper armors that simply do it better. Stone is known especially for the high faster hit recovery it gives, but as you can tell, it mostly throws in stats, defense, and a little resist from the Um rune. The skill charges can be cute, but generally aren't going to be make or break for any build. The one armor that is generally overpriced, that is used in a very, very niche build at least, is the rune word Dragon. That you may recognize from the Shield rune word video as well. This armor is another part of the Holy Fire build set. While not powerful enough to justify the cost of Sir, Low, and Soul runes for most people, it can be a fun distraction after you've reached a certain point of resources. This armor obviously gives a Holy Fire aura, which stacks with other Holy Fire options, and also some other okay perks for stats, and even has a fun little Hydra on striking effect. But it is otherwise unremarkable compared to the plethora of armor alternatives. After that, we have a few rune words that, while not best in slot, can at least sometimes find use. Things like Lionheart, that sits somewhere between Stone and Gloom, albeit a bit cheaper at costing Hell, Lum, and Fall. This is just a very generic armor. Albeit with a little bit of enhanced damage, which is a little low to be actually amazing, but it does give you a nice mix of stats and resists. It even has a lower requirement factor. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it, but I also wouldn't say no if someone wanted to just give me one. Another early rune word I wouldn't say no to, but also probably wouldn't make these days, is the rune word Wealth or pretty much one of the more well-known magic fine armors from the early days of Lord of Destruction. Wealth takes the runes Lem, Ko, and Tear, provides very little bonuses that are actually useful, but it does come with a massive gold find boost and a decent magic find boost, though only slightly higher than a 4 Topaz armor. So not super special, especially since there are options with nearly as much magic find, but far better bonuses. Something a bit more balanced, simply because it's relatively cheap taking only Mal and Tear, is Prudence. This is an armor that I generally use more when doing solo self-found early on than necessarily something I would make for an account where I'm sharing gear. It is pretty much the definition of okay, with some faster hit recovery, resist, damage reduction, mana per kill, and a nice little perk that lets you use it in ethereal armors for a little extra defense, the auto repair. Is it going to win any awards? No, but it's also not going to hold you back from making too many other rune words for your non-armor slots. As we move along, some of you are probably wondering when the skill armors will show up in this, since some of them are pretty, well, bad. Though by the sheer nature of being plus two armors, they can have some fringe uses. So putting them at the absolute bottom of the list seemed unfair, though only a couple can really give you some late game punch compared to other options. At the bottom of the skill armors is Myth. While cheap, only taking Hell, Am, and Nef, the Barbarian armor really doesn't have much to help outside of a couple select builds, especially since plus skills aren't really a high priority for the Barbarian. It lacks much in the way of survival benefits, and while packing Howl can be kind of fun, it's generally better left to conscious control, otherwise things will run while you are trying to kill them. I would probably steer clear of this one unless you're absolutely certain you can use it for your specific build. Not far behind that, we have Principle, requiring Rahl, Gull, and Eld. It's kind of expensive, especially since Gull is a fairly sought after rune. It's made worse by the fact that this armor is generally just not that good outside of killing undead, with plus two paladin skills, some life, fire res, and some other odds and ends, and a chance to cast Holy Bolt and deal bonus damage to undead. It really doesn't do much for the class it's designed for outside of some very specific farming forms. 
As we move more towards the middle, or in this case the bottom of the middle, we have Enlightenment, mid-cost but reasonable. Using Pole, Rawl, and Soul, the Sorceress skill armor gives you the usual plus skills, but also gives a point in warmth that isn't locked to class. The Fireball proc can be fun on a Zeal source, though you still have way better options for that build. So overall, this just feels like a quick plus skill for the Sorceress and desperate need, basically, and generally pretty much any plus skill unique armor, even low-end ones with only plus one skills, will serve you better than this. Next is Rain. This one gets a little love for me since it's not terribly expensive, only taking Ort, Maul, and If. It's kind of the armor equivalent of lore, but it's druid specific. Lightning resist, plus skills, a good chunk of mana, even a little mana recovery combined with Cyclone Armor and Twister for some flair. It's not terrible, it's not great, but it's passable. And if I have a spare maul and no better options, I'd consider making it from time to time. As we get into the higher end of the class rune words though, we actually have a fairly decent but cheap rune word called Peace. And while it is the Amazon skill armor, it can have some interesting other uses, especially since it's one of the cheaper armors, only costing Shale, Thull, and Am. So it's easily farmable in Act 1 Nightmare. This armor gives you two Amazon skills, faster hit recovery, plus a critical strike that's not class limited, some resists, and also slow missile when struck, and the ability to cast a high level Valkyrie when striking. It would be ranked higher due to the last one, but due to how summon checks work, that Valkyrie only sticks around if you have sustainable Valkyrie points, which other classes can only get through the Harmony Bow. Moving away from class rune words for a minute, I've kind of just debated where to put this since it has a lot of gimmick and fun uses, but I think it deserves to be relatively low or at least mid-list due to how expensive it is for the fun little tricks. And we're talking about Bramble here. Taking Ral, Om, um, Sir, and Eth, it's really expensive for what it does, and while best known for some of the fun Thorns builds for mercenaries, it also has some okay stats. Faster hit recovery, poison damage boost, mana perks, poison and fire resist, life per kill. So it's not useless, it's just there's usually better options outside of a few select less popular builds. Though I'll admit I do go out of my way to get this one sometimes, but usually don't recommend it to new players. With all those out of the way, we move into the realm of rune words I almost always make at least one of. Starting out with the most obvious one, Stealth. Tal and Eth, this is one of the earliest rune words season players make. It's super cheap, easy to make an act one normal. It comes with faster run walk, faster cast, faster hit recovery, as well as a handful of other useful mods, especially with how low the cost of the rune word is. While there are some competitive low level items, this is super consistent and useful for every class. Another extremely common rune word for me is Dress. This is Shale, Um, and Thull, and can give some fairly decent mods, with faster hit recovery, decent cold damage, a pinch of enhanced damage, crushing blow, open wounds, and even some resists. It can be a fairly decent offensive option for both player armor and mercenary armor when you're still building resources, and is easily one of the better mid-priced aggressive options even then. I still keep this in my top 5 list for mercenary armors overall, but it is more of just like a personal bias for me on this one in a lot of cases. On the flip side of that, we have Smoke, the defensive option at super cheap prices. Smoke offers really nice resist, a pinch of energy, and some faster hit recovery, all for a Neff and a Lum. While it won't win any awards for being special or top tier, the balance of cost and usefulness cannot be ignored, easily being one of your best early sources of high resistances for the move into hell difficulty. This brings us into the home stretch, with one rune word that I often put up here because it's exceptionally misunderstood, and that is Bone. A bit pricier, costing soul, um, and um, yes that's two ums, it's still farmable in Nightmare, but has a lot of features people often ignore. On the surface it just looks like some nice plus skills, a good chunk of mana, and an okay amount of resists. Though what really makes it stand out are its chance to cast features, most notably the 15% chance to cast level 10 bone armor when struck. While just okay for most Necromancer builds, with proper planning this can make the Necromancer nearly physical immune since chance to cast skills still get synergies, meaning with max bone prison and bone wall you get tons of physical damage absorb and due to the high cast chance this will refresh quite frequently. While Enigma generally wins out, there are a few sub builds of the bone necro that can make this armor approach an abusive level. Next up is Fortitude, the armor that beats out duress in terms of offensive armor in many cases, though not all. This armor packs a whopping 300% enhanced damage, a decent life boost, okay resists, a little faster cast rate if you need it, and a handful of okay modifiers added to it, all for the cost of only one actually expensive rune. 
taking El Sol, Dole, and Lo, with that last one being the semi-pricey one. This armor can be found on a number of mercenary builds, but I have a tendency to especially love it on ranged attack builds, where crushing blow from dress becomes less useful, to the point where it's usually the first armor I try out on bow builds of various classes. Next up, we have what is easily the most popular mercenary armor, and it's honestly good enough even for most melee characters, only costing Shale, Thole, and Lem, which makes it cheaper than even Duress. Treachery comes packed with often ignored plus two assassin skills, but that's mainly because it packs so many other great mods. 45% increased attack speed, 20% faster hit recovery, some cold resist, even a chance to cast Venom, but most of all, the important feature, a chance to cast Fade when struck. Level 15 to be precise. This gives the user of this armor a 15% physical damage resistance and 60% resistance to the four main elements while active, basically giving you 60% resist to fire, cold, lightning, and poison most of the time. Because, well, this lasts five minutes. Well, just shy of it. So, needless to say, it's very strong, especially for such a cheap cost. And finally, we have the two big dogs, Chains of Honor and Enigma, both being exceptionally powerful tools at what they do. Enigma is by far the most well-known, thanks to plus two all skills, faster run walk, classless teleport, life boost, damage reduction, magic find, as well as a variable strength boost. It is well worth the effort to make, even at the massive cost of jaw, if, and bear runes. It is also a major reason why the jaw and bear runes often fetch a strong premium among the high runes, because this armor is so sought after. As for Chains of Honor, what it lacks in mobility, it makes up for in durability. Also packing plus two skills, boosted damage to undead and demons, life steal, a flat strength boost and magic find, as well as damage reduction and a massive 65% boost to resist. It's a bit cheaper than its sibling Enigma, though not by much, costing Dole, Um, Bear, and Ist. This armor works well for characters that need that extra bit of durability or life leech, and still want those plus skills. I will generally favor this when I'm doing something that I don't care about speed for, or if I'm going into an area where I need an extra bit of survivability or don't necessarily need a ton of magic find. And that is all of the Runeward armors they've released at this point. Do you have a favorite? Do you have a less favorite one? Do you agree with my pseudo rankings here? Mention it down below.